to the bone, bad to the bone, whoa, whoa. I want to ask you, like, it's kind of like a little bit before the mall experience. What does punk rock mean to you? Like, what is, when you think of punk rock, what is punk rock? I think of punk rock, I think of, like, like youth. Yeah. <laughs> like, like a rare time in the Bay Area, you know what I'm saying, where the youth are just experimenting, like, yeah. you know, finding themselves. I feel the punk rock movement was when my generation was just trying to find themselves. It was like a, it was like the, the uh, subculture. It was like the more of the light. It was like a subculture movement. You know, a mm -hmm. bunch of kids who's not really on like, like, we're hood. We from all that, but we different. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we. Like we like to bright, wear bright colors in the movement where everybody's wearing baggy tees and yeah. and um, it was like a revolution movement, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah, definitely. Like you know what I'm saying? Was like, wearing the glasses and the uh, glasses, bands, all that stuff. It was like after the after the hyphy movement, but it was like it was the kids with the hyphy movement. I feel like mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So it was like us finding ourselves like we we're like we're hyphy but we don't wear baggy clothes like we wear more fitting clothes it was more street wear it was not like all like all big ass brands no more and jerseys and it was not all about that no more it was like a yeah. whole revolutionary of clothing like i feel yeah. like that punk rock movement kicked off how people are dressed nowadays definitely 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 from like the vans to like what was some like groups or musicians that stood out to you in that time like wolf wolf pack mm -hmm. diligence um, like Go Dave, like fucking like Young Barry, bro. <laughs> like, like, like Young Barry, <laughs> Young Barry was part of that movement. Like, Young Barry part that movement, but he was big at that point. Like, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. his music was rocking at that moment. Definitely, like, definitely. like it was like. It was like, nigga, if you didn't pay no bar, you was tripping, nigga. Okay? Like, That's when I remember wearing them OG donkey rope chains. Donkey rope oh, chains. Like nigga, that. the chain. Glasses. That's when skinny jeans got kind of in, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Jerking and shit. Jerking. Like, wow. like jerking yeah, and yeah, shit. Yeah. Like, that's when people got into, like, crew necks. Like, that's when, like, the whole style changed, like, a wave. Like, it was like, nigga, everybody was wearing button ups and baggy clothes, and all of a sudden, niggas was wearing, like, tight jeans and rock star shirts and, yeah. like, Dope rope chains and eighties looking shit and mm -hmm. like it went back to that like nineties little wave like kind of yeah. you know what I'm saying. So like in that time frame, what was your craziest party experience that you down to share on camera? It don't gotta you feel me. I'll What's your craziest that. party experience? <laughs> My craziest party party experience right then was when like the diligence had this big ass like party, bro. Like this punk rock. I can't it was called Fresh I don't, I don't even know what it was it was something, but they released a mixtape, it was going was crazy. It was the one in the church. It was the one in the church. Oh, yeah. And it was smacking <laughs> so was hard. Yeah, Nigga, smacking. I climbed through a window <laughs> to get in there. We we climbed through the church window and, and it was hella kids. We climbed this tree to climb through the window. Everybody climb in. The, I knew it. And guess who came? Who was who came trying to uh, who was security but who? came, let me go. Everybody Got kicked out. Guess who came? Rodney. For real? <laughs> yes. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, pause real quick. Hello? So, you know, we was talking for a second off camera just about the past. Like, people eyes for talent, people eye for just good people in general, just connecting good people. Mm -hmm. So, I know you were a dancer at first mm -hmm. and you did a bunch of other things, like within the scope of entertainment. Like, did you always see yourself going into this industry in some form or fashion? Like, I know myself, like, I always knew I had an eye for talent. Mm -hmm. I feel like I know what's good music. I can hear good music. Like, mm -hmm. you know, for me, I can point it out at an early stage. I just feel like that's a real talent in itself. Like, before everybody's fucking with it, you know what I'm saying? Certain mm -hmm. people got that type of ear and talent, you know what I'm saying? Right. So I just knew I had that. I always knew I had that. And, like, my point, when I when I was looking at the game, I, my, I idolized, like, Master P and, like, like Diddy and mm -hmm. stuff, and like Damon Dash, like when mm -hmm. I was re when I was coming up into learning about music and stuff, because they was in front of the scenes and behind the scenes, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's always how I want to be involved in front of the scenes and behind the scenes. And I feel like you get more money too being involved in front of the scenes and behind the scenes, right. and you get more knowledge. You feel me? So, so uh, I felt like me being knowledgeable in in this, well, I'll be able to win, and I'm willing to apply myself. I feel like I can get far. You feel me? Mm -hmm.
We doing, we doing an interview, Udi. What's poppin'? We doing an interview. <laughs> Shouts out, Udi just stepped in the building. You already know. Up, we in the Schmop House. This is a historic location, but to finish what you were saying, like you looked at people like Dame Dash, Dame Dash, and Diddy, and. Diddy, and uh, and, uh, Master P, like people who's in front of the stage, mm -hmm. like Birdman, even too. Like mm -hmm. I was always just, I always uh, wanted to be in front of the stage and be behind the scenes too at the same time. Cause I always looked at it like they, I wanted to be involved in it. You know what I mean? I don't want some people who's behind the scenes are more involved than mm -hmm. the people in front of the scenes. You feel mm -hmm. me? So um, sometimes, and I'm saying, if you're in front of the scenes and behind the scenes, then you can be involved in the whole entire operation. Yeah. So that's how I always wanted to be. You know what I'm saying? And I idolized like Match P and Diddy. They had their own clothing brand. They had they made music. They rap. I'm saying, well, so I can do that too. Cause mm -hmm. I always dream. When I was little, I always sketch shoes and sketch clothing and all the stuff like that. When I was little, I always sketched a, a star with a smiley. That mm -hmm. was gonna be the first. Yeah. The, the the brand that was gonna be my first like logo. It was gonna be a star with a smiley, but it ended up being a circle like a smiley, like whatever like that. And um, but I sketched that when I was little. I was just sketching stuff and like then I'm like, man, I want to design codes. I want to rap too, and I want to do do that. But I was like, maybe I'll just be behind the scenes. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I, didn't, I didn't really believe in my talents. You feel me? I didn't really until I started fucking with y'all. Really, I felt like I can rap, but that's when I felt like. Oh damn! Like I gotta step my rap game up. Like you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I gotta be better at this. I gotta be raw in order to yeah. to, to be able to be successful. You feel me? Mm -hmm. I gotta you know step up my skills. So I just started taking a serious time at y'all and mm -hmm. seeing that y'all talents. And I was like, okay, I see you making the beats. That's all I needed. Some fire beats. And I feel yeah. like I can I can learn how to you know develop a style or something like that. You feel me? So so I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna just I'm gonna just I'm gonna just rap. Do clothes and do everything just like Master P, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's just how I just apply myself to the game. I'm saying I'm gonna come with the clothing line, the music, and throw the purse. So like, what is Smop Life, and what is the artistic like the overall vision of Smop Life? When people see that logo, what do you want them to think of? Smop Life, is, this is definitely for Smop Life. Smop Life is a lifestyle. It's living mm -hmm. every day like a Saturday night. Mm -hmm. It's a positive lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It's a positive party lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Now, and our objective of Smop Life is to promote positivity through partying. Mm -hmm. So all the parties that we throw, we're, we're increasing the peace. We're, we're telling people to party and have a good time. And they see that when we party and have a good time, there's no fight in this peace. We get to do it over and over again mm -hmm. and have a great time. And usually... Everybody who has been to a Schmop or has been a Schmop event enjoyed themselves like it was one of the greatest experiences. Definitely. You know? So it's like, I always try to maintain that. You know what I'm saying? We only can maintain that if it's nonviolent, if there's no shooting, no, no fighting. And the majority of the time, it's been like that. The only problem it has is always just been too big and not enough space. So, mm -hmm. you know? So um, that's the objective of Schmop Life. And the vision of Schmop Life is. Um, the ultimate vision is to have a festival called Schmuck Festival. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's just to bring that a day. It's like an annual um, a festival event going on by Schmuck Life. You know what I'm saying? And um, from just a big party and and performances and you know and um, it's like a carnival with Schmuck Life. It's like it's like a like a state carnival but it's like but schmucked out. Yeah, <laughs> you know? that sounds lit, bro. I'm not gonna lie. So like switching back to music, like. Who are your top five rappers? And it's not in no particular order, but just your top five rappers. I just say Lil Wayne. Yeah. Mace. Tupac. Biggie. And I probably had to say Jay Z. That's a solid top five. What made you put Mace in your top five? Because I was just like the first rapper who had changed my life. Like, yeah. Like when I was listening to, I was listening to hella hard ass rap, but then when I listened to, you know, when I seen Mace, it was like, okay, this is like a, you could be fly and flashy and get the hoes too. You feel me? You ain't got to be the hardest nigga or some shit like that. The thuggest ass nigga today. You could be mm -hmm. fly, flashy. And that's what I more lean, lean towards. So I was like, man, I'm, 
I don't know if I'm gonna be the flying flashy rapper. I'm gonna be, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna get mm-hmm. the hoes. I'm gonna smile. I wanna smile. I wanna be yeah. around bitches. I yeah. wanna have a good time. Like, I'm having a great time. I don't look like I'm always struggling. Or I'm always in pain. Or I'm always, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, fuck everybody or something like that. I wanna be popping champagne, dressing, talking about my experiences in the clubs and, you know, fucking yeah. bitches and, yeah. you know, copping rollies and shit like yeah, that. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? And dancing and shit like that. That's more type of me. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'm more, I'm, I feel like I relate more to what Mace was saying so mm-hmm. that's what my like I'm like I like that you know what I mean so this is my last question being from Richmond myself what does the city mean to you like when you think of Richmond what does it mean to you and how's how do you feel like it's molded you I feel like Richmond as a whole I know certain people you know have had unfortunate experiences mm-hmm. growing up in Richmond mm-hmm some people hate Richmond. That's growing from Richmond. I don't literally heard people say, like, well, Richmond has been nothing. I hate Richmond because I just lost everybody I love in Richmond or something like that. But I love Richmond. Some of my best experiences have been in Richmond. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? I've been mm-hmm. all over Richmond. And Richmond, Richmond to me is just home. You know what I'm saying? Home, mm-hmm. sweet home. Mm-hmm. That's what, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I feel the safest. I feel like, you feel me? That's where I feel like. You know what I'm saying? I never leave. You know what I'm saying? I always go yeah. back. You feel me? Yeah. But I feel like it's most importantly is, is what it means to me is to be able to be somebody that can represent Richmond. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? The right way. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Make it to that scale to the point where I, somebody can say, cool job. But like, yeah, he represents Richmond well. You feel me? Yeah. You know what I mean? In, a, in the type of uh, way I want to represent Richmond. You know what I'm saying? Because we have a lot of, when you think about, a lot of people think about Richmond, they think about violence, they think about yeah. death, they think about Definitely. never coming there. Like, like my out of town experiences, yeah. especially telling people where I'm from, it's always like, with a kind of like a look of disgust yeah, a little like, bit. Yeah, it ain't yeah, like, like, oh, I want to come out there yeah, and be like, like oh, <laughs> like, oh, okay. Yeah, black educated men coming out of, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying, ambitious men coming out of um, Richmond, California. So that's what, that's what it means. To me. I feel like you played a really big role in just changing the perspective, like how you were saying with your parties, the music, the overall vibe and the energy that you give off through your movement is mm-hmm. like moving the city in a very positive direction. And now we see more and more people coming up with that outlook. And I think it's important for you to just maintain your voice in the city, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But other than that, like, where do you see this going in like the next five years? Cool John as an artist and Schmop Life as the brand. Cool John as an artist, hopefully I have some platinum uh, singles mm-hmm. as far as Cool John as an artist. Produced by Susie, you know what I'm saying? Invasion that's, that's Beats, no you know what I'm saying? Off-top. Get some platinum hits up in there, get some uh, plaques on the wall. Schmop Life be one of the Faces of the Bay Area in California, like as far as like, I wanted to be like, when I come to the Bay Area, I have to give me a Smart Life shirt. Mm-hmm. I have to party, I have to go to one of these parties and I need to tap in with that, what's going on with that. I need to get some music. I wanna I wanna fuck with the Smart Boys. I wanna tap in with HBK. Yeah. When the people come to the Bay, I want them to say shit like that. Definitely. And um, I feel like I'm gonna work hard to the point where it's, it's like that, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And um, as far as Schmop Life, in five years, I'm going to be able to first throw in the first Schmop Festival. You know what I'm saying? Uh, performing Susie, performing at that G thing. Off you know what I'm saying? Here, bro. There's no question. <laughs> and I want that as being like one of the biggest like things. And I want it to be one of the biggest events in the Bay Area as far as like just something annually. I just want to have be able to have throw something annually. I feel like I'll become successful when I can have a successful event throwing annually like a Schmop Festival where I can gather a lot of the Bay Area artists together or even other bigger artists to come out here and just fuck with the Smart Life movement, you know, see the yeah, music yeah. and um, have a good time, you know what I'm saying, a safe, good time, a positive time, you know what I'm saying, to spread the uh, message around the world, throw parties in our fists. I want everybody to be able to, I want that to be just as, um, I want that to be like a bumper sticker somebody would just put on there, you know what I mean, I want it to be, you know, throw parties in our fists is just something that people live and die by, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. so, um, and I just want platinum. <laughs> platinum, yeah. platinum, on platinum, on platinum. Platinum man. plus, and and uh, smart festival. Yeah, that's solid, man. Well, once again, it's tapped in what I am too. Come here first for that exclusive footage. The legend Cool John. Thanks again for uh, hopping on the show, bro. You on the first yeah, third? What's this? The third episode? So. I just appreciate you copping on this thing, man. Yeah, man. My, the pleasure is mine, my G. 100, man. Until next time, signing off.
bank on me, throw them racks if I want. Baby, bad to the bone, bad to the bone, whoa, whoa. Baby, bad to the bone, bad to the bone, whoa, whoa.